Good morning. I guess you guys aren't fair goers. And then, uh, no, but uh, been nice since uh, radio stations. Uh, yeah, Andrew, do kodo commission, ado kodo shinant adan oshenigi. It's very good to come to Winter Rock. We started from uh, Flagstaff at five in the morning, and uh, I have I came with uh, one of our uh, employees, and she was driving really fast. So we got here in like two uh, in record time. I couldn't believe I was early, um, but. Um, we're very happy to be here. She Tony Scrollan is a in Shia Kodo, she a Chito, and late Sitin Sadi on a Shah a Koho, um, Tolich Indian and Shito, Bishwich and Jane, Bashashin, uh, Lithuanian with the agent, you say, Conde, Doba, Bishop, what no other Koho, Ado, Ado Yata, Ado Yilad. I guess there's not a lot of Lithuanians. A Koho, uh, Shache, uh, Tizitlan et at a Koho, um, are you guys um how many of you here understand Navajo? <laughs> Let me get a handle on that. Uh, how about only English, only English, only? That's all for me. Oh, lady. Oh. Um, this is, it, you know, um, I'll kind of go back and forth like the vice president did and, and, and say some things in English and say some things in Navajo. But this is not a new subject. Um, a lot. Yeah, I was very fortunate. Um, I just was uh, talking to somebody that I really uh, um, look at as a mentor, uh, Mr. Larry Foster. And, uh, also, Roger back there. There's a couple of folks that um, we spent a lot of time around this subject for many years. Uh, the living and breathing this governance stuff and, and what could be. You know, and then LaVon Henry, I mean, others that are here that um, I've worked with over the years. Um, we really um, spent a lot of time thinking through what could be with our government and, and what it ought to be based on and what it um, and how it ought to look. And, um, um, so that's through that process we crafted uh, uh, the local governance act, um, and in crafting that, we spent a lot of time talking about um, traditional governance and, and just the old processes. A long time ago, when you know the, when we were first emerged into this world, what was checks and balances? What was the universe's responsibility? What was the father son? Uh, um, Mother Earth, um, just and, you know the the, the the what were the, the, the separations of powers and how did that all work, and so we spent a lot of time talking through that and and so since then, you know I was just a kid out of um, grad school working with these really esteemed people, and um, I really became a student. I, I I really you know and I admire that all the students that are here you know. Uh, uh, Amber and Moroni, um, um, all the folks, uh, even Ethel, uh, uh, Mr. Curley, Andrew, and others. They're, they're, these are young people, and I can see in their eyes. I can see when, when they you call them on the phone that they're just excited about where we can go, what what we can do, you know. And I was like that at their age. I was like, oh man, what can we do? And and it was so good to actually work with our medicine men and our tribal leaders and and think about these things and and and. Ever since then, I've been a student of this. I, I really, um, I really um, am starting to become like a deep thinker on this subject. So, uh, what I, um, I I wanted to um, talk about today is uh, is uh, you know I, I tried to come up with a, a title that kind of could um, um, encompass a lot of the um, um, uh, uh, what you guys are going to talk about today, and I wanted to make it kind of an exciting title, and I so I. I Floated just to Andrew, and and I said, if you know, I want to ask you guys, what kind of government and economy would past leaders like Barbancito and Manuelito build today if they could travel from the past to to the current future, and if they saw what was going on, and if they could bring us all together, what how would they approach this? And so that that that, that was the, the the thought, and um, I think. Um, I guess the, the, the first thing to, to understand is that um, we all um, must look back to, to that time 
And what, you know, I, I would ask, what was it that drove them to risk all? Life, family, everything. So that, that we, at the Nini Tlinigi, we could all live here again within the four sacred mountains. Uh, so we can have our language, we can know the land, we can have our clans, you know, as uh, our vice president so eloquently talked about. And, and I have thought about this for some time, and um, I really have um, recently begun to put these considerations. Um, like these great Nat'ani, um, you are here to build a nation um, uh, with good governance and an economy to match. And I want to talk about some concepts that um, uh, two, in two areas, uh, governance and economy. And ba really based on some of the thoughts that I, I would think that um, ever since I was a kid, um, uh, the first area is um, governance. Um, consider our history and, our, and how our ancestors were able to craft the fantastic oral story of who Dine is, the teachings, the natural laws, the songs, the arts, the natural laws, the taboos. So now what's up? But ske nehi nehi zato nehi nahagato nehi ol ilto at eh di nanset dato aze dato nahagata aise aze is ine belaht eh nehi de nebes pe hozat eh to na antin ske na na antin dalia di hot a di nasam baka anjono ina to hot a e sin aise hot a dalia sin zelo chon dan klasa. How to have a harmonious home, how to have a, um, in, in a way that um, that was a, um, a, a way to survive in our world. And our great leaders recognized that, that we had to figure out a way to pass that down so that future people would always know those things. Yeah. Think about that. And this again, we didn't back then. We didn't have Facebook, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have internet, no Navajo times, we didn't have Andrew to shoot out all across the reservation, all the things that were happening with our government. Uh, but this was passed down from from generation to generation. We had a lot of systems. Yeah, I how many of you guys have an arranged marriage? Shouldn't a case a hundred years ago. You want your grandkids to actually have a home. You want them to be ready for winter. You want them to even now, eh, you, you look for the appropriate partner, spouse for your child. So we had all these things. Even things like, um, uh, um, so this was a, there was a process to create these teachings, to create, and we wasn't just a rosy existence. It could be an attack, it could be a drought, it could be uh, your, your sheep start dying, you know, maybe they're eating some plant that's bad. It could be uh, 
whatever. Oh, you are not not um, How do you deal with that in a traditional form of existence a long time ago? There was um, a family group was made aware of a, of a problem. Yeah. And the problem may be something that, um, like I said, could be, let's say, a, a, a plant that we've never seen before is, is causing all kinds of problems in, in our families. Or uh, maybe there's been some, some kids that have been going into the hills and doing crazy stuff up there or, or whatever. But a gathering would be called to bring together the responsible um, and knowledgeable representatives from, the, from different communities. But, you know, again, um, um, you need it to find people to represent you. So that was in a way um uh not and that that transition at some point. So there was accountability, there was representation, and it was an ultimate honor. If somebody from your family, let's say your grandpa or your uncle, um, your grandmother, that was the most honorable thing. So that ain't even in the 1930s, but that was the ultimate uh, um, uh, um, recognition of you living a really honorable life. You knew the songs and you knew the, the teachings, you knew you were living that. So you got to represent your community. Uh, but it wasn't like you just made your own decisions, you had to. And so you got prepared. And it depends on the issue. Some of the issues you had to have ceremonies. So you had to have sweats. You had to have certain things done. It depends on if it's a real hairy issue, really something. It, it, it took a little more to prepare. But that allowed people to come together, and even how the meetings were done, you know, you didn't have one person just looking down on everybody. There was a whole process for, you know, one hour meeting, two hour meeting. I say, again, I say, again, and again, no Navajo Times, no internet, no KTNN. That was how solutions were created, that's how problems were solved. And, you know, and how do you share that now? And some of that nantin had to be done in a way that people would remember ya. Though that could be passed across the reservation. And so that was where there were songs, there was teachings, there was story, there was art. Um, in selecting um and that was uh, just a one glimpse yeah, of, of what we're missing in our government today. And we tried to, um, we tried to instill some of this in when we uh, worked on the um, Council of Nat Ahia, at Celeste, the Council of Nat Ahia, 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 the Council of Nat the Council of Nat Ahia, the and 
that was a, a model that was based on that. I call on the government. Kade do what e de kade di de bashne ki e again do e she allow ni dan de do e she hun shu e kot the kot ano shun chi di do do he di ni dan that that was not the the way of of how, how our leaders acted. Of kita a kuwa se a jo pato kahun zin do halan na do she she wait that do she tata. But I hit the nin de don zonot, yat in the even that's hold nayin it, lean that 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 honorable leadership, a coho. And and it was something everybody aspired to. Karen, um, the net the ho yanagisha, they don't want to mess with window rock, yeah, they don't want to mess with chapter yeta, chapter jubaha, osad, hold nothe. Le saho e ani, a sata kuji yisa, le government development nashisha, that net how the shah, saho ninja and under studio sani, jeno de yis yido, the dos lahon jeno chiat al kyot, a kot a a pi gansen, a konde, oyo, we're going in a whole different direction with this, a ko, aid even nakwa, kot aba hotish niton sun is in the future as we talk about these concepts is that. It's important to think back to these old processes that are more honorable, that are more Navajo, Nick, and that more that people, it will really help us more in the long run if we went back to things like that. And again, that's just, that could be just hot air from me, but um, um, I, I, you know, I, I like to talk about these things with our elders, and I know this is something that I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, let me, and then um, now a little bit about um, economy, yeah. Um, I don't ask this kid. Um, I want you to, again, think about the economy, you know. Um, I liked, I, I was um, asking the other day, I said, um, how many of you guys grew up in a Hogan? You know, learning the our, our stories, coyote stories, joking the old way. I mean, let me see a hand. Uh, Hands, yeah. Ooh. Okay. Thirty years ago, most of you would have said, "Shh, shh, shh." Shh. I grew up in the Hogan. I don't need all this. Um, and uh, you know, I, as I, I was a kid and I grew up in the Hogan, and you know, I always tell them that I only, only had two pairs of socks and two pairs of uh, pants and one pair of shoes, and I wore that to every everything. Um, but now I would ask you, like, how many of you guys live in a like a three-bedroom house and have your own bedroom, showers, big TV, <laughs> internet? See, um, what what the the response here is 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 the thing, yeah, economy that they know and and late kita a um. Oh, you not the net eyes as Kiranian, not long a whole one need a naya. Kade oyo eyes of the Ghana, catch all that tea. A coho, um, do a quite a hot eda, art and a summer car hot essay. Joe, the American dream, they clear three bedroom house, two cars, shower, um, you know, kids go to college, uh, cut out, barn sea case, a coho, and hit a coto, the need a nay, yes, and oh, yeah. Um, and, 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 I, and I, again, I was your former economic director, so um, I really have um, wrestled with some of these issues. Um, <laughs> Lay that I cannot yell at I said that sin, though I cannot yell at Tin, though all in a little get a chill as the L, eh, though the yogi L, eh, though the pens, eh, Argiado, though by Hawind India, eh, though made by Nasa, though Tata and Hadlon, Bahwind, eh, 
akonde kato jiskaho so the yego dinash ka di economy he nenegi akoho a jo chiti agi e di climate change here din da atana sangi oyo yil cho akoho to i se nihi eskena we survived on this land here in north america tracks ni nenegi for over 30000 years this Western economy, the ah she pa who nihigi ah she power plants have been nasha atel nihigi ek adin dalaz es latin na es latin es latin na khaya don zabe i napi gata aji ki nish oh es es nash nello akohod es kita e um khalet ala e nande khalet ha ila bets anon de deal gesh in san francisco so e kado atish la so akoh ah kado Nah, nah, nashkan shal aja da sutau ya. Ayo, all our leaders, all our um, um, from the chapter house to window lock. I sula jobs aja. I sula we need to become like Phoenix and Flagstaff. You know, we gotta have the big shopping centers. We gotta build the marinas, the casinos, hotels, tramway into the Grand Canyon. You know. I said that now, Nishia had Nietzsche, Adam and yet, what are they yet here? A coho, I remember um, working on this issue right here with um, the, uh, the, um, the, the vendors, yeah, um, and um, I remember the vendors, I remember they used to, this is like um, maybe 15 years ago, 12 years ago, they used to all be like kind of in shacks, and um, but every, we all still ate there, right? You know, we all. Um, but that was really a, a traditional economic thing, you know. And I remember uh, meeting with them, and, and, and the president said, you know, try to work out something with them, because they get, 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 kept getting health warnings, and, and there was things that, um, but it was all owned by the families, that land. But we worked out a deal where we actually were able to, to, to salvage their, 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 their continued livelihood, yeah. But in a way that you know, we had to create this really like good partnership and, and figure out a way to do a good lease, and figure out a way that there can always be vending there and give them like little places where they can still sell food, but that meets like health standards. I remember when we did that, a lot of people got on me and they said, "Why did you? You just gave away the most prime spot in Navajo Nation to to vending." <laughs> and I, my response, but that's our culture. That's who our people are. You know. And, but I see this all throughout the reservation um, uh, in a chapter meeting, yeah. And again, I'm a student of economic development. I do lectures on economic development, and I educate people on how to do economic development. Um, we, um, it's really easy for a community to sit there, and, and, and this is what happens when we get, um, is, is that we say, we think of economic development as a new business, yeah. It's gotta be a nice big gas station. It's gotta be a nice, a nice big shopping center. A nice big hotel, you know, um, but yet we we realize we don't think about the the people that are already in business. Oh, hayu, oh hayu, na na nishte yesh get aho wadota. Anything. There's a lot of people that sell different things, and we never look at those things. And and so so I think that's something that uh, this issue and, and seeing what happens across our reservation uh, has made me realize. Um, I have spent many years working on economic development and 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 I need and led hot led Nassama couch on Javaya. Wherever you travel in the world, you know, like if you go to wherever France, and I know some of you guys go to South America or Asia, uh, you want to you'll run into somebody that knows that you know that wants to know who you are. Hari la na kan kita do ni so haila benan ni nacet the net ah ah ni je dah lah. Why do you call yourselves Navajo? And ni kita o eh, what do we talk about? You know, is there a hogans and or sheep herders um ni hizad yeah. We're a lot of things we're proud of. Anjaga hot eh, apa hot sah? Then it's like oh man, I'm really proud of our our land and how we are, um but. Working for you on economic development, and, and for, for, for I was an executive with the nation for seven years, I really, um, I begin to ponder these things, yeah. Um, is, is there may be a time in the future where we no longer have shepherds, no, they're hurting the old way of men and women not wearing a tziyil, 
uh, not being able to build a hogan, uh, when we never, we no longer speak or sing in our language. And we're lucky as a tribe, but um, I work with tribes on the plateau now. There's some tribes on the plateau where they have one speaker that's fluent left. Uh, there's uh, some tribes where there's only a handful of elders that still know the old teachings, you know. And we're not going to know the land yet. We're not going to know how to um, honor the land and talk to the land. Why do we want to build a nation? Um, so, um, you know, I always wonder, like, are they, like our tourism advertisement, we put these sheep herders and hogans, yeah. What about in 30 years, we no longer have sheep herders? I mean, what are we going to put on our brochure, you know? What the hate about today, kiss? And then when you're a sheep herder, you're supposed to not just, it's not just about the way, it's not just about the way, it's not just about the way, every sheep has a personality, and these are skills I think that we're losing, but the economy we're building, that we we're trying to copy this western economy, is um, it doesn't value these things, yeah. Yeah, so these uh, songs, the, the, the teachings, the, the hogan builders, the plant gatherers, the shepherds, the farmers, um, those that know the land. We, it doesn't, this economy that we're trying to build. And um, there's a big question too. Uh, a lot of the ceremonies were done, a lot of things were done where we just helped each other. And I was lucky to still witness that when I was a kid. Those things we're losing is that ability just to help for 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 honor, for um, um, and plans responsibility for relative responsibility, and so these these things were were it, because we're trying to adopt this Western system and, and, and have it permeate who we are, and I ask you to ponder these changes. Yeah, these are some things that we really have to think about as we build a government, as we build. And we can still turn these things around. Uh, and, and so th those are some of the things that, that are, are really important. I think um, as a nation, though, um, you know, I bring up these issues, but then you can say, well, there's no role models. Who do we copy then? Who has a, um, who's done well? I think the, the people that have done well are our ancestors. Back in the time of Manilitu, back in the time of Barbancito, um, uh, as I, I grew up in a place called Flint Hadid, India, and I would um, herd sheep and take breaks. I took a lot of bricks, so I lost a lot of sheep. <laughs> but um, on every, almost every hill, I would see um, potsherds. Yeah, I would wonder, you know, what, how people must have lived in that area. Oh, you, you in あ、こう、どうちっていいな、ねんで。あ、そうよ、どうほんしやだんで。あ、こう、あ、けな、だつ、ちな、あんだんね、んで、んさんさ、すけ、すけ、あ、こう。あ。ね、あ、あ、あ
Again, it, it, all it takes is some simple facts, yeah. Before 1492, over 500 years ago, there were over 90 to 100 million people living in the Americas. Uh, this was one-fifth of the world's population. Or again, a lot of the, the, the um, um, Europeans never saw our tribes because the diseases had wiped out whole tribes. Yeah, probably 90, more than 90 percent of our population. And most of the evidence, there's a lot of evidence that we're, we're, people were here 30,000 years ago. Your ancestors, they, they settled the lands, they built the family, you know, built family and communities and discover the best way to uh, live in this environment and also have a, have a living, yeah, be able to, 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 to live. Um, and, and if you're not, oh, the Nenle, like you look at the old pictures, let's say of uh, the, the 1900s, those people had a, they, they had a subsistence. If you look at them and the way they're dressed, they're, they're really dignified and proud and there, there was subsistence and, and we were um, the furthest thing of a wilderness waiting to be filled by European settlers. <laughs> um, nomadic savages, nomadic savages do not create some of the most colorful languages, medicines, advanced agriculture, and figure out how the future generations would know the stories and, and, and would know how to live on this land for thousands of years. And you know, one some of the, the interesting facts is that. Your ancestors, 75% of the food that the world consumes came from our peoples. Beans, corn, tomatoes, peppers, potatoes. And some of my favorite foods, shrimp, popcorn, turkey, sweet potatoes, strawberries, all these were, were domesticated and created in the Americas. Over 200 plants. Two hundred of the plants that are now used as medicines, we created. Over a hundred years ago, we already knew all these things. Even now, the um, the medicine, the, the scientists, they want to study how we deal with things like depression and, and things like that. They really want to figure that out. But a lot of our medicine don't want to share that anymore. That this is really ours. Um, our government even, Kodo government, the three branches, checks and balances, they're based on the Iroquois Confederacy, they're based on our tribes, yeah. Um, and they didn't copy all of it, they only copied parts of it that worked for them. Remember that too, it's not like there's some parts that are left out. We had, we knew everything, even the solar systems and the, the, just the movement of stars and planets. But we, the most important thing I think we figured out is how to live on this land for generation to generation to generation. And um, we had over, some of our cities, you know, that we had over 15,000 inhabitants. The tribes were all different, yeah. There was desert tribes, there was mountain tribes, there was sea tribes, oh, you al But they all knew their areas very well, and we needed each other. We need those tribes on the coast to know their coasts and all the medicines, all the things that can be created. We needed the mountain tribes, we needed the desert tribes, we needed the farmer tribes, the gatherer tribes. When you have a place like that, doesn't make sense to have trade. Doesn't make sense. It, we had some of the biggest trade gatherings ever. I mean, we, we had, and there's still places where they know that they had gatherings where people would come together and exchange, yeah. And even close to here, we, um, like Navajo and Hopi, us younger people, we think that there was also constant hatred, um, and, and, but it never, it wasn't like that. And if you talk to the Hopi elders, they talk about like, you know, like Hortvilla. And so you had this exchange of, you had exchange, yeah. But it was more than that. The Navajos camped out at, at night. They had their dances, their singing. It, you know, when you're living a good life, you know, when you're like having a good home, you want visitors, right? You don't want the same old neighbors just to come all the time. Why do you build a nice place and make things in order? You want to show it off too. 
So we were, our near, we were each other's tourists. <laughs> And I was, when I was a kid, you know, we had tourists, and, and I know when my grandmother was born, she, her name was Mano, and because the Hopi family had come to visit us, they called her Mano, 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 don't know, a koho. But we were each other's visitor. We needed each other, yeah. And um, those things we forget, right? And all the tribes were like that. We were like that with the Supai. We were like that with the California tribes. We shared materials. We shared culture. We shared teaching. We never were like, oh, those Hopis over there, those Zuni over there. It wasn't that kind of existence. And those are things that, again, the modern were brainwashed into that. We know that we needed each other because each of those tribes in their region knew the land, knew the seasons, knew when exactly how the land ought to act. When it gets cold, what happens? When it gets warm, what happens? When it doesn't rain, what happens? when it's time to let the land rest, when it's time to, and, and how to harvest those resources. So that, that was a, um, an economic system. And we had, ah, it's Diego. Even here at home, you know, we had that exchange, we had that trait. You um, know, that happened in the Great Basin, that happened in the Columbia River. We, we had the Hohokam had trade areas. Um, we had one of the, um, uh, the big ones right here um, uh, uh, over at Chaco. That was one of the trade areas of Kitana. Our elders, um, some of our elders are like in their 80s and 70s. They still remember the time when the tribes used to come together and um, they, they hear the stories and, and so, they cry when they do that. When they, they and, and again, there's there's an honorable system there. It's a, an, an economy of honor. I think is something that we, we should think about. And it's an economy that when we build an economy, we gotta make sure that there's places for these things. So that that um, as we embark on creating an economy, I would encourage you to study the history and teachings of our tribes. There's a lot of teachings and, and history there that were very effective. Um, we know how to live a good life. We know how to have positive thought, respectful debate. You don't have to agree with everybody. And then how to build a life of meaning, how to raise an honorable family, how to think about your community, um, uh, how to know the land, the plants, the animals. Knowing the drumbeat of the earth, Keya he now, that Keya has a drumbeat, and being able to know those things, as, as, and this will take you far, I, Diego, in life. Uh, most importantly, please understand that development that reinforces culture. You know, it shouldn't always be just about money. You know, I think that's, not the most honorable way to do it. Yes, we need jobs. Yes, we need running water. Yes, we need, you know, all the things we want to have the American dream. But let's make it the Navajo dream, you know. Let's make it us for us, yeah. Um, we, um, we need to understand that development that reinforces culture to ensure that without a doubt that our societies will continue for many generations. Our teachings and as, as ceremonies will continue in a good way. That will be... Um, that will always be here again for another 30,000 years. It's something that we should aspire to. And as, as, you, as you listen to my talk and you saw like the, the systems of, 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 of how tribes live, how our, our government was and how we knew the land. Um, and it was so important knowing the land. That's how we built traditional governance around. We really need it. And it's how we built our religions around even is that people had to, we need people to know the land, we need people to be able to recognize the plants and, and know the medicines and the uses and the, the hills, the canyons. Um, those are the things that are really, that formula works. It worked for 30,000 years, it's gonna work for another 30,000 years. And I saw so that, that, that is uh, uh, my, my talk today. And, and uh, so I wanted to give you something way different from, you know, this is like what the government should do, and this is like how much money we should get, and this is the, the efficiencies we should create. That, that's talked about every day. 
But this is a, a whole different topic, and I hope you, you found it enlightening. Yeah, I'll